Hey, it was Adam Phil Tech, but now I want to hear back playing some bad fiction ultimate team. And it is Friday, which means we got some new football outsiders and packs. We got a 94 overall DeAndre Hopkins. Now, um, yeah, I don't really think that, yeah, DeAndre Hopkins should have got a 94 overall card. So Madden is pretty much telling me that DeAndre Hopkins' performance to get the awful, awful Tennessee Titans warrant a 94 overall card. Now, it could have been a full outsider's Calvin Johnson. That would be more likely to make like a 92 overall DeAndre Hopkins or whatever. Like this card, it looks really amazing. I just don't think DeAndre Hopkins is better at this stage, especially against going against the Titans. Like going against the Titans, he's not better than Demarius Thomas in real life. He's not better than Calvin Johnson. He's not better than Odell Beckham Jr. Like, he, he's, he's good, but he's not that good. And I guess that's just a product of him getting a good performance at this time of year. So, we got that DeAndre Hawkins 94 overall card. We got Desmond Trufant. We got Jason Worlds, Lane Johnson, and Akeem Spence. So let's check out these two cards. Here is the 24-hour DeAndre Hopkins going for 368,000 coins right now. It's not a bad card, though. Pretty good. 95 speed, 97 catching traffic, 95 catching. He has 93 spec catch. Anything in this guy card that's hidden. Any good jumping attribute. Let's see. A 79 carry, pretty solid right there. So he's not going to fumble as much as it does. Brian Wood, 94 jumping as well. So that's pretty cool to see. And anything else on this guy's card that is pretty clean to see. Uh, injury's pretty good. So is his stamina. And yeah, not, not too bad of a card. Um, I'm not too sure how much Calvin Johnson is going for right now, but if they're around the same price, I guess I would go with Calvin Johnson just because he's six foot five and receivers in this game that are six foot five are amazing. But DeAndre Hopkins, especially playing in the slot with 97 catch in traffic, not a bad card. Here is Hopkins compared to Thomas right now. Both these guys have the same speed, have the same pretty much same catching catching and traffic in favor of hopkins right now the only huge increase is going to be the elusiveness and i probably assume carrying because Marius thomas is prone to put the ball on the ground here is jeremy macklin as well whose price i think is about 190,000 coins and here is uh, emmanuel sanders you got this uh, mike evans devin hester just for bleeps and giggles and ty hilton so like deandre hopkins card is not it's not bad i just really hope it comes down around the same price as those two receivers do because right now if you guys want to get a nice elite top tier wide receiver i'd recommend picking up mac with the Thomas because right now the price is pretty cheap and they can pretty much do the same thing hopkins can plus uh in demaris thomas case he's a lot taller a cornerback that i'll be picking up is this desmond trufant for the south one 94 speed 95 acceleration 95 man coverage 90 zoned 83 player recognition with an 80 awareness 95 agility he can be my new slot cornerback because right now or my nickel cornerback because right now i don't have a guy to rely on like casey hayward's good but he's not fast Fonte's good but he's not fast my fastest cornerback is this cromarty and he gets stuff done and in my nickel i'm running this sean smith who is really slow like 89 speed that is really slow and pretty much he gets picked on because if his game people will abuse drag routes and slants and because they abuse those two routes when receivers who aren't fast to keep up with them usually a big gain so when Desmond Trufant's price comes down, I might have to pick him up. Uh, oh, I'm not might. I'm going to pick him up. I'm just going to see his price come down first because I don't really want to pay that 70,000 coins right now for this guy's card. It's kind of expensive, but he is not a bad card. Any good catching on this guy's card? Let's see. Any good catching? 66 catching. So that's good enough, I guess you could say. Uh, 94 jumping as well. So everybody has the same jump rate. He this guy 94. And how is this guy run support? He has good block shit with that 67, better than most cornerbacks in this game and he has good injury and decent stamina so he's not terrible um i really just buying for his speed though. 90, 94 speed is something that's awesome and it can affect my team immediately so uh, not a bad cornerback right here so this jason world has been up for about an hour and a half and nobody's bought it yet so i'm probably not expecting a great card right here 84 speed 92 acceleration 83 strength with a 70 zone rating which lets me know this guy might not be a good coverage linebacker but it's cool because the Steelers run a 3-4 defense and this guy rushes the passer uh, against that game against the Panthers uh, they played ridiculous like <laughs> everybody did what they wanted to against that offensive line so this guy is taking it out real quick yeah 40 catching not a good linebacker to put back in coverage now he'll still catch picks I have seen linebackers of junior Galette's caliber who have not good catching at all catch picks because this game's just ridiculous guys with 77 ratings and 90 ratings drop picks but guys with 40 catch them it's, it's just something this game does and it's kind of frustrating uh, anything else on this guy's card so he has 95 finesse move 80 power move with an 83 block shit so the finesse move being kind of high is awesome but i think in this year's madden power move is more important because finesse move in last year's madden would, would, would kill this year not so much linemen pretty much are 
just retarded. If you can get, if you can just push them out of the way, they're they're good. I don't think finessing by them is a good idea. And uh, 85 play recognition, he has that 87 injury, 92. St- All right, so I can see why this card is not highly coveted. It's not bad. It's just not worth 14,000 coins. This Lane Johnson card should be amazingly fast. Let's check it out real quick. Yeah, 82 speed, 80 acceleration, 90 strength. He has 90 run blocking, 95 impact blocking. But I hate his awareness, yo. Like, this card could be so good if he had, like, great awareness. Like, I, right now, I use Greg Robinson at my left guard spot. And even though he is a great run blocker when it comes to pass blocking, I don't have time in the backfield. So I feel as if, if like, pretty much Lane Johnson is your ideal right tackle, right? He's your ideal right tackle. Your left tackle is supposed to be a guy that's supposed to protect your quarterback's blind side, especially if you have a, a right-handed quarterback. Your right tackle is supposed to be a power strong fast power block like must be just an amazing athlete and just be able to go out there and run guys over and he can do that he can do that for you and his prices get cheaper i'm gonna pick him up because i want to try him out but yo like that awareness is gonna get your beat so bad because he's gonna let guys come right by he's gonna let guys run right by him and you're gonna fumble the ball and you're gonna be mad but i guess if you guys do a lot of running they don't pass much like i know kareem does a lot of running he passes occasionally but kareem does a lot of running and this guy might make a great right tackle for his team. And for those that don't mind subbing into offensive linemen, you might you can buy, buy this guy and sub him into certain packages. Because I think, for example, I'm going to buy this guy when his price comes down to cheap. And out of the pistol formation, I'm going to put this guy next to Delaney Walker because this guy has tight end speed with lineman blocking. This is a nice card to have right here. So go to compare this guy right now to my current right tackle, who is Mitchell Schwartz, who is more of a pass blocking right tackle. Here's Sean Cho Henderson. Here is Brian Beluga. So. Lane Johnson's car is not terrible. Like, it's not terrible by, by any means. It's just going to be annoying when it comes to pass blocking because he's going to get you beat. Last car we look at today is going to be this Akeem Spence for the Buccaneers. And this guy's car is kind of confusing, right? He has 70 speed, 94 strength, which is good. So I'm expecting a massive power move. But no, his power move sucks. But it's 63 power move. And he has 84 finesse move. And he has 91 block shit. I'm like, okay. This car is really weird. Like, it's really weird. And I go to the depth chart, try to find some hidden attributes to see. I don't really see anything too crazy. It's 86 tackle, 79 jumping. Uh, no, 84. Eh, it's, it's, it's a weird card. Like, it's a really, really weird card. And he has a great hit power for a D tackle. So I don't I don't know. Like, I, don't, I don't know how to use this guy. I'm not too sure how to use this guy because generally I try to like find guys that do the same thing. That I really get it. Like I think I have J.J. Watt, Joe McCoy, and those guys who get a power move. And this guy is awful at it. And this guy does not seem like a run support type D tackle because he has uh, not great block shed and not great power move, but he does have great strength. So this guy might be a run support D tackle. I'm just not sure how I feel about this guy's card right now. Here is Nick Fairley who's going for on the same price right now. And Nick Fairley has great power move. Block shed minus two. Yeah, but he has it's, it's pretty much the same car for, besides the strength obviously but like yeah like i guess if you want a strong d tackle you got this akeem spence who'll be a good pickup for you but i, I just i don't know I'm, I'm confused by that guy's card so i'm gonna go ahead and cut it right there and because you guys are awesome today right now i will be opening up two of my 12 game changer packs i want to pull a 24-hour card like i want to do pro packs but i'm still kind of broke right now I'm not doing coin packs at all. And I, I just want to see if I can pull one of these amazing cards out of this pack. So let's get right into it. These things are sat here for about a week, I guess. I, I don't know. I didn't know when these came out. Like, it's been here for a while. So let's go get right into these packs. Hit that thumbs up button. Let's see if we can get lucky and get some good, amazing pulls out of this pack. And we get AJ Hawk right away. Base, goal, not going for anything. We get eight. Oh, he's just still in packs. I forgot. It's kind of cool because these guys are still in packs because they just released a leftover set and some of these cards might have some value you know they might not oh really though how are we gonna get a free agent set and they're gonna give us a card that's not a league right now that doesn't go in a set like that's kind of <laughs> that's kind of stupid all right we got a kiko alonzo of the plus we got a deandre levy that's not the card i wanted to pull right there Derek cox you got a size corn we got a michael another free agent card on the game sweet potatoes green beads what you playbook we got eddie royale Okay, can I put like a high gold? Like, no, no high gold yet. We got the we got Kiko Alonso, who's our highest gold, who's going for like 300 coins. All right, that's not good. That's not good. The turkey collectibles. We get a Xavier Rhodes, extra gravy. We get a gold badge. That kind of scared me for a second. Thought I'd be an elite. A Kendrick Lewis, the wrong Texans guy with dreads. And last card is a cornbread. So, 
the pack was not that good. That pack was pretty bad. Like, I honestly think the most expensive cards in these packs are going to be the uh, turkeys collectible, which kind of, like, it, it makes me want to go ahead and open the rest of my pack so I can get those turkey collectibles, but I'm going to go ahead and wait. So let's get into the next Game Changer pack right here, and that will wrap up the video as we get a Joy Bell. Go backwards this time. Get a Zach Mart Rising Star Ground and Pound. Okay, not bad. Compare this guy real quick to what I currently have. I Right now, I'm in between right guards, right? I'm in between right guards. Like, I really, really... I'm, oh, I'm playing Mike Pouncey. I'm, play, I'm playing Mike Pouncey at center. And I want to sell Kyle Long. I want to sell Marshall Yonda. So, I think I might do that Zach Bard set. I, I'm not... I don't know, though. I might, I might end up doing it. I might not. We'll see. I get another one of these cards in this video. As we get a Gold Turkey Collect with Bill O'Brien. We get a... TJ Carey, which takes place for my collectible. Not bad there, which I've been elite player. We get another Thanksgiving collectible. Gold Quentin Jammer. Is he in the set? Yes, he is. Go to add that guy to the set because he's probably going for no coins. We get a Corey Lugay. Oh, Sammy Watkins. Come on now. Least it least it. Wow. <laughs> elite. Roast turkey. Entree. We get a Ryan Matthews. We get another gold badge. That color is green. We get a Lane Johnson pull. That green kind of scared me, yo. So we got a right tackle. I can go ahead and try out now. See how this guy plays. See that run blocking is. We got a Ryan Tannehill quarterback for the Dolphins. An elite dessert apple pie fried turkey. We get elite Nate Washington. Oh no, Chris Clark. We come down to the last couple cards, guys. And it does not let me pull in anything else out of that pack. So we got two elites to that pack plus a Zach Martin plus Elaine Johnson. Not terrible. Man, I was so close to pulling my first 24 hour card, but that's going to be pushed off maybe until next week. We'll see. Anyway, folks, that's the video. Hope you guys enjoyed this quick pack opening of the Texas Boy, and I'll catch y'all mother later. Peace.